this is my tenth year serving in the Panic Parade. As you remember very clearly during my interview, uh, I had a, a lot of uh, very nervous and uh, exciting meetings with all senior professors in the year. So I came with a film view on February 22nd, 2005. That was a, a little bit more than 10 years ago. Uh, so I was worried about my background, for example, PhD from China. Then uh, Elias and Jim was strongly encouraging me. <laughs> so then I came here for interview. Eventually, too, many of you had him. So here, the talk, uh, the title of my talk, The Dream Risks in Insurance and Finance. I'm sure some of my trivial people have listened to this talk more than once. Uh, so I thought about the talk, but I cannot make it very specific, so it's better to give a very general talk. <coughs> so let's move on. Uh, this is our plan, mainly two parts. The first part, I will briefly introduce what is the dream value theory. The second part, I will talk about the model of the dream dependence. So let's go to the first part. Uh, so once we talk about the dream risks, so a very popular name here, the black swan. So what is black swan? <laughs> So this is not. So, <laughs> so, so it doesn't look very, very beautiful, right? So here the name essentially comes from the book by uh, Kelly, uh, published in 2007. So in the book, they start the following: uh, before the discovery of Australia, uh, people in the old world were convinced that all swans. Uh, this is, seems to be a uh, completely conformed uh, state by empirical evidence. So the sighting of the first black swan completely destroyed such a belief. So here, uh, so from uh, such a description, uh, description, so people start to use the word black swan to describe something and expect that. <coughs> then they summarize the following uh, triply of the black swan right? The first one, very, very, <coughs> it means the black swan event occurs with very little probability. So it's hard to predict. So second, once it occurs, it will produce uh, extreme impact on the society, on our economy, even uh, will threaten our society. So that's the second characteristic. The third one, retrospectively predictability. So it means it's hard to predict. So nowadays, uh, the prevalence of black swan facts accompanied by uh, distorts economic and social consequences make today's work far different from just decades ago. So this is a sentence uh, to when uh, Elias Chamon, Chamon is here, uh, and me uh, prepared a proposal to do this sentence. For, for as we go on. So here. Uh, so the black swan event, I can mention a few. Oh, I only mentioned a few ones in the new century. So here the first one. Uh, so the new century started from the 9-11 attacks. So that is a typical black swan event. So it's hard to predict. No one could predict. If we quote, we can avoid it. The second one I would like to mention, 2004, Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. That happened just before Christmas Day, uh, 2004. So 2005, Hurricane Katrina. The next one, uh, 2008, Sichuan earthquake in China. So we, we saw moving a lot of. Uh, okay, uh, 2008, Great Great Recession. Uh, so this is the most serious one after Great Depression. Uh, here, some people call financial crisis. Uh, so seven and a half years uh, later. Uh, President Obama, in his uh, uh, 2015 State of the Union address, he said, the shadow of financial crisis has gone. Who knows if it has gone or not? So here, the impact to the society is, 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 is huge. That's my point. The next one I will mention is uh, 2010, Haiti earthquake. Then, a year later, 
the Japan earthquake, tsunami, nuclear crisis. And the most recent one, 2012, Hurricane Sandy. We can mention a few more if you want. But I only give you this few. I think everyone can read them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is IOC here. So the river, where is our building? Here to somewhere here to Iowa, was flooded. This was mentioned by President <coughs> Manson uh, just now. <laughs> so I, I wish it, she could stay here to see the video. So let's move on. Uh, so to, to talk about the extreme one theory, so we first start with the central one theory. So everyone, I assume, uh, who's, uh, who's sitting in this room with the central one theory. It means, well, SN is the sum. Then if we can find no mean constant, <coughs> AN and such that this whole, this has a limit. I, I prepare this in the general sense. So here, if, if it has a limit, GR, indexed by R, then we say central limit theory holds. So here, when R is Q, uh, this GR becomes to be normal. <coughs> so this is the most general uh, version of central limit theory. So here, uh, it has a non-degenerate limit, and uh, indexed by R, the upper has to be between 0 and Q. Where I is Q is not uh, So th this is central limit theory. We work on the partial sum. Uh, so if general limit theory, if we want to tag the general reasons, uh, central limit theory usually doesn't work anymore. We need to, instead of the sum, we need to look at partial maximum, MA, maximum, here. So uh, this result looks very similar, but it works for the partial, partial maximum. Here, if we can find a <coughs> normal constant CN and EN such that this normalized distribution converts to uh, some non trivial limit distribution, HSI, then we say it generally appears. So this is very similar to central limit theory. Uh, we have index psi. Psi can be any zero number from negative infinity to plus infinity. Here, in this case, we write F Q. MDA, maximum domain of attraction of this non trivial limited distribution. So then the immediate question is what is the sign? Then at what condition here the IID sample will fall, uh, will fall into this maximum domain of attraction? So the first question has been completely answered by these people. So first by uh, Fisher and the Hupac in uh, 1927. Later on, Kudilenko <coughs> gave a strict proof for the result. If the limit, uh, we have the non trivial limit, then the limit must be of this form, up to some uh, affine transformation. So we have some uh, affine transformation. This is the standard form. The limit must be of this form. Here we have index sign. So the limit looks very nice, but it's far from normal distribution. So therefore, so the theorem is called uh, Fish. Feedback in the angle theory. Uh, so psi, the index psi can be negative. When it is negative, we have wave distribution. When it is zero, we call it gumbo. When psi is positive, we, uh, we call it Bushy. The three names here. So here, I just uh, copied from the internet, from Wikipedia, the graph here. Uh, when psi is negative, wave of A, it's uh, the blue one. The blue one here. Uh, for when x, it has to be up uh, bounded by some upper end point. So upper end point has to be finite. That's a variable case. If we want to model something with up bound, variable case can be a good model. Uh, so size zero, the gumbo case. Gumbo case here, uh, you look at uh, the red one. The red one. Uh, it can be either heavy pair or light pair. Either way. So the gamma case is the most complicated because when we do inference, usually we can only get her a primary side to be exactly zero. It, it should be slightly away from zero. So then, so how many minutes do I have? Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. When size is positive, the distribution is heavy pair. So when we believe something is heavy pair, uh, for she case can be good. The typical example is primary. Uh, these are very good uh, uh, references. So I essentially follow this book in my office course a year ago. So uh, he gave a correct lecture two years ago, whatever. Else. 
Now I do it in the second part. Extremely dependence. So in this part, I will talk how to model extremely dependence. First, we start with this general model here. So in insurance finance and nowadays risk management, people talk about uh, this portfolio loss. Portfolio loss here. The problem is uh, these losses have to be dependent because they are exposed to common or similar risk factors. They must be dependent. Now, the question is how to model them? The very first of all, we would, we, we would uh, think about it is money very normal. <coughs> However, it completely fails in most situations, in the following sense. So, uh, experience data usually should pronounce that symmetry, but uh, normal is symmetric. Say the heavy uh, normal is extremely high here. Third one, the symptomatic dependence. Money very normal. Uh, must be asymptotically independent, no matter how the co uh, correlation coefficient is. So there's an interesting story here. This is a journal, a financial journalist, a sale, Zuda, a very, uh, a very interesting article. The formula that appeared on Wall Street, so after the financial crisis, he summarized this is the formula uh, which killed Wall Street. So let's, uh, let, let me explain this formula. The TA is the default time of company A, <coughs> TB, default time of company B. So the left hand side is the probability of a joint default. So then, uh, David Lee, who came from China, got a degree from the uh, University of Waterloo in Canada, then uh, found a job on Wall Street. Uh, he used the Gaussian model, uh, money uh, variable normal model, to uh, describe this probability of a joint default. Then the model, the problem of, of the model is it and significantly underestimates the joint default. So here, the uh, uh, market and normal completely bad in that situation. We can see some evidence from scale plots because of time has been quick. The next model, we would think, uh, is a chicot which help a little bit about the dependence. So this model indeed is a, a positive pair dependence index. It's not a pair independent. Then the problem of this model is it's a symmetric. So up and the lower tail index coincide. So that, that's not good. Because for financial data, usually, so one side is strongly dependent, the other side is less dependent. <coughs> so we can see some evidence from the scale of. Then the next model is Gumbo. Gumbo would be good. So here, the lower tail index is zero. The upper tail index is positive. Then this one. This is some evidence. So here, then the next model, which is popular, credit risk model, uh, credit risk management, is a mixture structure. So this mixture structure here, so u zero just some low, uh, location parameter. Here, it is zero systematic risk. It uh, one to eight b, it is a credit risk. Then w is com uh, w is used to describe common job. We assume that independent. This is a typical mixture model. This model has been very popular in credit risk management. So here, all the models I mentioned just now used to describe uh, 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 asymptotic dependence can be unified in the following structure, MRV structure. So what is that MRV? It can be the following. We say as random value follows the MRV. If we can find a limit dimension new, such that the following code for so all new continuous set A away from zero. If this relation holds, then we say uh, the random variable follows MRV structure. So here, uh, so very useful textbook on such a concept. So this definition becomes very uh, flexible in the following two senses. The first one, it has a great generality to model extreme dependence. We can easily adjust the new such that we have a different dependence on the particular strength from the independence to even full dependence. So this model. The second, if we assume MRV, then the tail of the sum, which is important in risk management, can, can become a trivial uh, question. We have immediately, we have this result. So I have to finish my talk. So in this talk, I hope. Uh, I briefly review the 
do any theory. And I also show you some thoughts the model is not independent. I conclude that MRB is used for primary work to model both heavy health and the asymptotic dependence. The same thing. So in view of more and more frequent flex wine events, so we talk about global warming and so on. So there's an urgent need, I hope this uh, keyword, urgent need to analyze the extreme risks. We see sometimes traditional statistics and methodology may fail uh, to deal with extreme risks. So here, last year, I like to mention here the story. Last year, SOA released a request for proposal. Uh, the proposal, the title is Health Risk Analysis and the Correlation of uh, Risks in Health Dream Environment. So here, this request for proposal shows uh, SOA people has an awareness to deal with extreme risks. Then, uh, three colleagues and I submitted a, a joint proposal in the government work. So let me finish. Thank you very much.